taxes. Very complicated field, constantly changing, lots of rules, and thus a huge professional class of business experts that we've been talking about. I think you can both talk quite a bit about applying these ideas to this domain and some other domains as well. Marcus, you go first. Yeah, it's also a great motivator for software people because it's really, really boring to learn all these, you know. It's, <laughs> seriously, I mean, it is very satisfying if you as a software person can focus on this meta stuff, on analyzing the domain, understanding the abstractions, and then encoding them in a language, right? And then the details can be filled in by the actual subject matter experts who try to take pride in understanding all the stuff we don't really care about. So... um yeah, so um, we are working with uh, a German service provider. Um, they develop um, software which tax advisors then use. A uh, company name is called Datev. Um, and so um, they have various departments, and two of them, uh, one does salary calculations, like salary slips. They have been doing the MPS DSL stuff for a while. Um, and now, well, also since a while, for a while now, um, there is the second department about uh, creating tax declarations, the, the thing you file at the end, or in May, I think it's in the US, right? There's this like, tax day somewhere. Um, so the software that you can use or that a tax advisor can use. And so um, 10,000 data fields, uh, hundreds of validation rules, um, hundreds of subject matter experts who will use this stuff, 30, 40 different subfields, you know, kinds of tax, um, executed in uh, finally in Java code in the cloud. Um, and we are building a DSL and also already using that DSL where uh, these subject matter experts can express the calculation rules, the data validation, but also the logic, the structure of UIs, right? And how to create certain reports and forms. So it's a very kind of the, the complete subject matter workflow will be done with DSLs. And let me guess, whatever is the rate at which people master this, the rate at which it changes is plus one. The rate at which it changes is plus one? I Meaning your... the tax laws change constantly. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, absolutely. I mean, you d absolutely. Every year, I think I heard about 10 or 20% of that logic changes in some way. Um, mm. And so there is also this requirement that they have to uh, be able to reproduce tax declarations for 10 years. They so have to do a lot of versioning and it's it's a really I mean it's it's funny how the domain if you look at the specifics like the actual tax rules it's it's crazy and boring for people like me but from an engineering perspective from building the language finding the right abstractions and all of that it's quite interesting actually uh, Vaslav uh, I think you have familiarity with this domain but could you also mention some of the other domains that you know of which have Kind of successfully apply this language engineering idea. Yeah, of course. Otherwise, it would look like that. Uh, you know, this <laughs> it's only for approach taxes. is only useful for taxes. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, yeah. So there's obviously there's numerous examples. Uh, you know, in in many different domains. Uh, so perhaps I'll mention two. Um, one of them is um, you know an insurance company. Um, so you know they in the insurance business they've got experts on insurance which uh, who who you know they, there's a department of those and they create uh, they create various you know rules that describe the business and they historically they've done it in you know they, you can use any tool but they were using Microsoft Word at least this particular client uh, so in Microsoft Word they wrote the uh, sort of the, uh, the, the the rules for the business and. If you, if you look at that, what, what they write, it's actually a function with some, you know, textual description and uh, it has some sort of parameters to accept values from, from other rules or from, you know, from, from, the, from the system. And then there is some computation, some calculation in there. And, uh, you know, the, the workflow was very fragile back then before applying, you know, these uh, domain-specific languages things because they had to send these documents to an outsourcing company for manual coding into C, and then that code was actually then made part of the system and compiled and run and tested. And, you know, obviously you see the fragility, right? If, you know, something changes in either it has to change in the document or something is discovered in the code when you run it, uh, then you have to find, you know, where the 
you have to match the code and the document and somehow you know sort of reiterate and it takes forever to reiterate so now with a with with a language workbench now they've got a they've got a tool that allows them to write code that is very similar to what they used to from word so it looks like a word document actually we, we made the syntax really look like word with bold and lines and stuff <laughs> seriously i mean it looks mm -hmm. like a word document which is a absolutely useful in this case for an yeah. adoption purposes that's brilliant absolutely yeah right so that's for adoption, but you get benefits. You get code completion, for example. You've sure, got, yeah, yeah. yeah you, know, it, you get underlining. It tells you, you know, here, wrong here. You're using a parameter that is actually mm -hmm. not sort of, you know, available it's in It's tooling, here. right? Right. Yeah. And you pr it's and tooling, you press and you didn't have to write it because the workbench gave it to you. And you press a button, and you've got your C code. You know, there's no need yeah, yeah. to manually do something. So that, that sort of Word document, which is not a Word document, is what is stored in Git, not the C code. That's a product of code generation that you can sort of, you know, redo any time. So it's a, you know, so sort of product of that. Let, let me briefly jump in that we basically, you know, call it crazy. How, how can you do, you know, write requirements documents and hoping that they are consistent Ugh. and then give it to, like, yeah. we, we kind of laughed about this ridiculous process that we use, but it gets even in some sense worse. We've, both Vatlav and I, we've met domains where they noted that they have to become more formal. And then they hacked literally 25 pages of Boolean expressions that are supposed to be a medical treatment algorithm into Word without any tool support, without the ability to execute. This is maybe even more ridiculous, <laughs> right? I mean, it's like we programming in Notepad without a compiler, but hoping to get it correct. It is crazy. Yeah, this, this idea of kind of manual intervention at every single term might be good as a job preservation program. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not really efficient. Uh, yeah. Let's move on. Uh, Marcus, I believe you made the point um, with me. DSLs are about business things. Programming is about implementing those. Can you expand on that a little bit and kind of get a little specific about yeah. how you would sit down and actually do it? Yeah, so an, an example from the healthcare domain. We worked with a company called Voluntis in the digital therapeutics uh, field. So it's basically you you get uh, apps on your where's the camera on your phone um, with that that guide you through some kind of treatment. For example, um, you might uh, you know go through chemo chemotherapy and you have to take your temperature a couple of times during the day. You have to say something about your appetite and stuff like that. So this thing basically guides you through and tells you you know, uh, take this pill here, take the temperature again, please, or worst case, call your doctor, you know, the algorithm is kind of out of ideas. So the the healthcare experts, which would be the subject matter people, they describe when to ask the user what, when to recommend what, uh, you know, judge certain responses. If at this time of the day, the temperature is above such and such with this and this history, then that's kind of alarming, stuff like that. And so they spend weeks um, writing these algorithms with the DSL. They play through them. They have a simulator. They even get like a little simulator that looks like a phone so you can actually play through the app. So that's the that's the businessy thing, although business is the wrong word here, the subject matter, right? But then what is about software? Well, we have to run this on an iPhone. So we have to somehow get it to be able to work in the background, which kind of doesn't work on iPhones. So you have to reactivate the app from time to time. If you want to remind the user to take their temperature, you can't have a background process. You have to actually make a calendar entry so that iOS pops up a reminder. Um, you want to be able to, um, you know, if the application goes to sleep, then you have to restart it with a certain state. This is all software stuff. These people, the software, the domain people don't care about it. So mapping from what it is they want to do to the iOS specifics in this case, that's what the software people do. That's what programming is about.